Hi, my name is Laura Gu, and in this video we will be talking about the specific kinase and general transcription factor, TF2H, that phosphorylates RNA polymerase 2A. After that, we will then look at data in support of the idea that TF2E can enhance the phosphorylation by TF2H. This video has been made as a resource for MCDV 427, Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. We will first go into some background about RNA polymerase 2 and general transcription factors. From a past video, we know that there are two major forms of RNA polymerase 2, the 2A form and the 2O form. This 2A form, highlighted in pink, has the unphosphorylated version of the RPV1 subunit. The 2O form, highlighted in green, on the other hand, contains the phosphorylated form of RPV1. This conversion from the 2A form to the 2O form is carried out by a kinase, and this phosphorylation specifically occurs on the C-terminal domain of RPB1. The other form of RNA polymerase, named 2B, lacks this C-terminal domain and will therefore not be focused on in this video. The unphosphorylated 2A form of RNA polymerase binds to the promoter and joins the pre-initiation complex. The phosphorylated 2O form of RNA polymerase carries out elongation of the RNA chain. It is believed that this phosphorylation may allow the polymerase to shift from the initiation to elongation phase. So the major question that will be addressed in this video is what is the specific kinase that is responsible for the phosphorylation reaction? Before we look at the data, let's briefly talk about the general transcription factors that form the pre-initiation complex. These factors follow the naming pattern TF2 and then some letter. These general transcription factors also bind to the pre-initiation complex in a specific order. The first to bind is TF2D, which contains Tata binding protein, abbreviated TBP, as well as Tata binding protein associated factors, or TAFs. The next factor to join is TF2A, followed by TF2B. After that, TF2F and RNA polymerase II will bind together. TF2E will then join, and lastly, TF2H will join to the now complete pre-initiation complex. This last general transcription factor, TF2H, is the focus of the next figure and is responsible for the phosphorylation of the RPB1 subunit of RNA polymerase II. The method for the assay is as follows. Complexes were formed on cold promoter DNA. Each reaction contained plus or minus RNA polymerase IIA which contains the unphosphorylated form of RPB1. These reactions also contained plus or minus TF2H and gamma labeled 32P ATP. Since we are primarily interested in the phosphorylation of RNA polymerase 2A, it makes sense to radioactively label ATP and not DNA. By doing this, we will only see things that are getting phosphorylated. Gamma labeling was necessary as this will be the only phosphate transferred by the kinase in the phosphorylation reaction. Lastly, various mixtures of the previously mentioned transcription factors, for example TF2D, B, F, and E, were also added to form the pre-initiation complex. These complexes will all be performed under ideal DNA binding conditions. After some time, the different reactions will be electrophoresed through a process called SDS page. The researchers chose to resolve the gel in a way to visualize larger proteins such as RPP1. From the previous diagram shown, the 2O subunit is quite large at around 200 kilodaltons. In this assay, we will be looking for the conversion of the 2A subunit to the 2O subunit. This will be visualized by the phosphorylation of the 2A subunit at around 200 kilodaltons. As a reminder, we are visualizing RPB1 on this gel. For the first lane highlighted in pink, only Pol2A was added. This lane shows that there was no autophosphorylation of RPV1. For the second lane highlighted in yellow, only TF2H was added. Since RNA polymerase 2A was not added, we should not expect there to be a band around 200 kilodaltons. We can see that this is indeed the case. For lanes 3 and 4 highlighted in orange, we can see that TF2D, B, F, and E were added along with Pol2A. TF2H, however, was not added. We can see that TF2D, B, F, and E alone are not sufficient for phosphorylation. Some may argue that there is a faint band in the fourth lane. Others may argue it is just a smudge. Regardless, at best phosphorylation is very poor. Additionally, at the bottom of the gel highlighted in red, there are some dark bands present. 
While we are unsure exactly what these bands are, it is apparent that some other product is being phosphorylated at this position. Since these bands are not near the expected size of our PP1, we do not have to worry too much about them. In lane 5, which is highlighted in green, PAL2A and TF2H were added. The other general transcription factors, TF2D, B, F, and E, were not added. This lane shows that TF2H alone is sufficient for the phosphorylation of RBP1. Finally, lanes 6 through 9, which are highlighted in blue, contain both POL2A and TF2H, along with increasing amounts of other general transcription factors. From these lanes, we can see that as more transcription factors are added, the efficiency of phosphorylation also increases. So while lane 5 told us that TF2H could phosphorylate RPP1 on its own, we can see that phosphorylation is much greater with all the transcription factors together. Another interesting observation is that the biggest increase in 2O phosphorylation labeling occurs between lanes 8 and 9. This led to the idea that maybe TF2E is somehow enhancing the phosphorylation of RPP1 by TF2H. The next figure will show data to support this idea. For this next experiment, the same phosphorylation assay was performed. This time, POL2A, TF2D, B, F, and H were all added. In lanes 1 through 5, TF2E was not added, while in lanes 6 through 9, TF2E was added. A time course of polymerase phosphorylation is shown on the gel from 5 to 90 minutes for the minus 2E condition and from 5 to 60 minutes for the plus 2E condition. From this data, it is clear that the lanes with TF2E, as highlighted by the orange box, have more rapid phosphorylation of RPB1. We can conclude from this data that TF2E enhances phosphorylation of RPB1 by TF2H. For recap, TF2H is a kinase that phosphorylates the 2A form of RPB1. Therefore, it converts RNA polymerase 2A to RNA polymerase 2O. Secondly, TF2E enhances the kinase activity of TF2H. Hope this video was helpful and forever go blue!